Sports Animation. Every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Today, we're going to follow the story of Rebecca, a dynamic, dedicated woman, and her husband Mark, a charming, seemingly perfect man. At the beginning of their relationship, Rebecca attended church, but was not born again. As a result, she lacked discernment and lived in the flesh. It was later, after the wedding, that Rebecca really met the Lord. Everything seems idyllic in their family life until she accidentally discovers Mark's secret double life. This discovery came as a great emotional and spiritual shock to Rebecca. It was a great ordeal. Follow. I thank God that everything is better for me today. My son has become an excellent banker and is taking good care of me. Look at this beautiful house he gave me. My mother's dream has come true. I'm so happy. Now I'll just have to hope that my child has a good wife to make me grandsons. This is all I have left to see in my life before I die. My son is here. Hello, Mom. Happy arrival, son. Thanks, Mom. How was your day? It was wonderful. Okay. I'm not going to hang around too much today. I just came by to say hi. Why are you in such a hurry to get home? I have to go to the restaurant to buy food. My son. This situation must change. You can't have a very stable professional career and not want to get married. It's not right at all. Don't worry, Mom. You know I already have a girlfriend, right? Yes, but it takes a lot of time already. Get married. Okay. By the way, I'd like to have a chat with your girlfriend tomorrow if possible. I'll pass on the information. Thanks. Happy arrival, Rebecca. Thank you very much, my friends. You must have something to tell us with the way you're so happy right now. Guess what Mark's mom just asked me today? She probably asked you to leave her child behind. Tell us everything, girlfriend. We want all the details we can get. She asked me to marry her son. Ah. Why did she have to make this proposal? It doesn't make sense. Let me explain. She was letting me know that if I wait for her son to propose, he never will. She also tells me that she's convinced her son loves me very much. It's just that he's not brave enough to ask me to marry him. Do you think it's right for your boyfriend's mother to make this kind of proposal? Isn't it up to the man to prove his love to the woman and ask her to marry him? I think Andrea is right. It's no longer up to parents to find a wife for their sons. Where's the embarrassment if the mother proposes? Isn't it a sign of consideration and love on her part? She could have proposed to another woman, but if she did, it's because she really wants me to be with her son. The problem isn't the mother. What makes you really think that the son in question would want you as a wife? Maybe he already has someone else he loves, or someone he's committed to. Mark has no one else in his life. I know he loves me, and I love him very much too. He just needs a push because he's shy. Shy? Uh-uh. I've got nothing against the lady. But in my opinion, it's better for the son to make the proposal. Even if his mom has to be in on it, it's up to the son to make the first move. By the way, I don't know why you're getting so excited. I'm not even going to marry him until he asks me to. His mother just wanted me to understand that she agrees with our union. That's all. Well, if you take it that way, it's a little understandable. But I think you should take your time, enjoy life a little more, before you put a wedding on your head. Rebecca, my love, I take you as my wife this day before God and man. I also accept you as my husband today and forever, Mark.
Congratulations, son. At last you're married. Thanks a lot, mom. Strange, I hadn't seen David or his mom. They'd been informed, hadn't they? Obviously, mom. David is a bit busy these days, and his mom is traveling right now. All she had to do was leave me a message to let me know she was away, and also to wish me a happy new home. I agree. But I don't think your friend David's reaction is right at all. You two are inseparable friends. I can't imagine him being absent on your wedding day, no matter how busy he is. Don't make it a problem, Mom. It's no big deal. If you say so. Tomorrow I'm off to friends, darling. Oh, you're going again? Yes, dear. It's an emergency at work. You've already been there twice in the same month, darling. I don't have a choice, baby. It's a work obligation. How long will you be there this time? Just two weeks, darling. Two weeks? But that's too long. Not that much. Time flies. Don't worry, we'll call each other every day, even on video calls. It won't be like I'm away. Okay. Happy arrival, Rebecca. Thank you. It's amazing to even see you. Lately, after your wedding, you've been very scarce. What brings you to my home today? I've been a little bored at home lately. So I decided to come and visit you. Or do you mind? Why would I mind? You're always welcome at my place. You yourself know that I enjoy your company. It's you who's been pulling away for some time now. You're right. But I understand perfectly. You're married now. You have to take care of your home. I hope your husband is well in taking good care of you. I'm sure he's fine. What? Don't you live in the same house? It's been over a week since my husband's trip to France. Is that a reason not to know how he's doing? I haven't heard from him. What do you want me to say now? I can't figure it out. Is it his cell phone that's spoiled, or is it yours that doesn't take calls anymore? My cell phone's fine. Since Mark left this country, he hasn't even called to cough in my ear. Yet he had promised to call me every day on video. He's probably busy over there. That's what I'm trying to believe. But this is the second time this has happened already. Really? Yes, the first time was a month after our wedding. So you mean to tell me that in less than two months after your wedding, your husband has already made two successive trips to France? Exactly, my girl. Do you have any idea what he'll be doing there? He always tells me it's professional. But why doesn't he take you with him? You're a young couple. It's time for you to stay more together. Why don't you ask one of his colleagues to confirm what he says? I don't want him to feel that I'm doubting him. It would be a sign of lack of self-confidence if I started asking his colleagues about him. How can it be a sign of a lack of confidence if you ask around? In fact, I don't know any of his colleagues. In any case be vigilant. There are too many women fluttering around like butterflies now. Learn to secure your territory. What are you referring to? Do you think he would cheat on me with another woman? I haven't said that yet. I'm just asking you to be vigilant. I heard. But wait, why don't you talk it over with your mother-in-law? As it is often she who speaks for her son. I'm sure she'll be able to tell you more about the situation. Happy arrival, darling. Thank you very much. I hope you had a good trip. Yes, very good. Why didn't you let me know you were coming? I could have picked you up at the airport. I wouldn't want to disturb you too much, baby. It won't be an inconvenience. Rather, it's a way for me to make myself useful. All right, then. Soon then. Where is he? Isn't he lying next to me? Honey, honey. Yes, I'm home. You're not asleep yet. But it's light. You're thinking about me, you say. I think about you too. Besides, I can't sleep when you're not next to me. 
Yes, we'll see each other again very soon. I don't know when yet, but I'll be back to see you soon. Right now, I've got to take care of my wife, too. Darling. What kind of call is that at 3 a.m.? Rebecca. What are you doing awake at this hour? See you soon. I wasn't sleepy. Who were you talking to on the phone? It was with a colleague with whom I had made the trip to France. A colleague? Yes, darling. A colleague calling you at this hour. Is this normal? We were working on a project from France that was breaking our heads. That's what we were talking about on the phone. Well, I'll be damned. Anyway, I'll be in the room. Okay, I'll be right there. Okay. Yes, hello. Hello, ma'am. Are you Rebecca's mother? Yes, it's me. How can I help you? My name is Dr. Bill. I'm calling from Central Hospital to inform you that your daughter is currently hospitalized with us. Hospitalized, you say? Yes, ma'am. In fact, she's in labor, and if all goes well, she'll give birth by then. We have tried to call her husband to no avail. That's why we're contacting you directly so that you can come and help your daughter. Alright, then. I'll be there shortly. How's my baby doing? Your baby is very lively. He is healthy. Okay, mom. But where's your husband? Hasn't he arrived yet? My husband has been on assignment in France for a week, mom. Ah. Uh, what? How could he travel and leave you alone when you were almost full term? It's the obligations of the job, mom. He had no choice. Besides, he thought I still had about a month left. That's why he left. Didn't he know that first pregnancies don't often last nine months? I'm not happy either way. Even if he had to go on this mission, he could have asked me. Or enlisted his mom's help to assist you if need be. He can't just leave. It's my fault, mom. I could have warned you of his absence and asked for your help. Always there to defend your husband. If I don't defend him, who can I defend? Happy arrival, darling. When did you get here? I arrived this morning. I called you when I landed. Then I went to the office to sort out a few things before coming. I'm in. Thank you for the flower you sent me. It's very pretty, and I like it. Alright, then. It's nice to know you like my gift. And I'm very happy for us. You've made me a dad. Are you sure you also opened the box inside? Was there a box inside? Let me check. Wow, a car key. Yes, darling, this is for you. I can't thank you enough for being in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, honey. But why are you thanking me, my baby? For everything you do for me. I don't always get 100% of what I want, but you go out of your way to make me happy, and I feel it. Even if you travel too much, and forget me on your travels, as soon as you get home you make up for it. But I don't forget you, my love, during my stays in France. Don't think like that. Well, I've come to understand and accept that France comes first. After all, it's work, isn't it? I don't have to worry about you forgetting me so you can concentrate on your business over there. I'm really sorry you feel neglected while I'm in France. It's true that I'm very busy when I go there. Even dinner is often complicated for me. But don't worry, this time it won't be the same. Okay. You already said I heard. Anyway I'm already used to it. Thank you, darling. I love you. Me too. I forgot to also thank you for the gift you gave my mom. Oh, that's nothing yet. The best is yet to come. You can't even imagine how happy she was. She showed everyone your gifts. It's a pleasure. Who's that man in the hot sun? He's probably looking for a cab. I'll give him a hand. Thank you very much for your help. 
May God bless you. Amen. You're a pastor, apparently. Exactly. How did you know? Through your behavior, and also I see your style of dress as well as the Bible in your hand. I can see. So you're a Christian too, I hope. Yes. Listen, there's no shame in it. Whether you're a Christian or not, know that God loves you, and it's never too late to make up for it. Except after death, of course. I'm a Christian, but I just don't go to church anymore. It's been almost a year since I've set foot in one. Oh, but why, madam? I don't even know why. I think it's a lack of motivation. Since my husband doesn't go anymore either. I see. But you don't have to wait for someone's motivation before going to church. Even if your husband doesn't go anymore, you have to keep going. Who knows? He too may regain his strength thanks to you. You are so right. What's your name? It's Rebecca. All right, I'll pray for you and ask for the grace of total conversion. Thank you very much, Pastor. I invite you to worship in my church. I'm in. Thank you very much. Where's my wife? She hasn't been home since I got here. I call her, she doesn't even take. Happy arrival, darling. Are you back from your trip? Yes, I've been home since morning. But where have you been? I was at church, darling. Church? Yes, dear. I've started again with a church. Okay, but why didn't you inform me? Do you give signs of life when you travel? Every time I ask for the same thing, but you've never changed. Now you're sulking because I went to church without telling you? Did you at least check your mailbox to see how many messages I'd left you unanswered? I'm sorry, darling. Where's our son? He's with mom. Okay. Mark left his belongings in a mess in the bedroom again. Every time he comes back from a trip, it's the same thing. What's this? Condoms in Mark's pocket? But what would he do with condoms and lubricants in his pocket? Mark. What are you doing with condoms and lubricants in your pocket? Oh, we had done a professional workshop when I was in France. That's where they gave us these. Professional workshop where condoms are shared? What's the purpose? Do you put them on your customers at the bank, or do you put them on the bank notes? Why do you talk to me this way? I didn't say anything wrong, I just want to understand. There's not another explanation to give you apart from what I've just told you. Okay. Good heavens. What's going on? Since I'd met Mark, I'd never doubted him. But why is this happening to me now? I feel like Mark is cheating on me with another woman. I have no right to doubt my Lord husband. But now I can't control myself. Lord, I know that nothing is hidden from your sight. All that is obscure to my eyes is very clear before your face. Open my eyes, Lord and show me what I need to see and know. I love Mark very much, and I'm too attached to this marriage. I'd hate to lose him. I know that you are love, and that it is you who established marriage and who unites us. Amen. Are you ready for work yet? Yes. Don't make that face, honey. I apologize for yesterday's incident. You know how much I love you, don't you? Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you. Kisses. Oh, Mark left his cell phone at home? Oh no. Should I pick up this call? The person has just sent a message. Baby. I hope you had a good start to your day. I miss you so much. Wow. Mark really was cheating on me. But what are you doing out tonight? Don't you want to answer me? I left my second mobile at home this morning. There's a client friend of mine who should be calling me on it. I hope you picked up. Who is Dini? This is my client I'm talking about, darling. 
Her name is Baby. Which customer calls you Baby? She's the one you're going to see in France, isn't she? No lie, yes. We've seen each other once or twice when I go on missions, but there's nothing between us. I know she likes me, but I avoid her. Are you avoiding her? Yet you call each other almost every day. She calls me for professional reasons, darling. I want to believe you. Let's forget about it and have dinner. Okay. Hello, Dee Dee. Please change the number you're calling from. My wife found out about you. She came across your text messages yesterday. Please change this number and, if possible, stop calling me for the time being. Please stop being so jealous. You yourself know you have no right to compete with my wife. Please stop it. Happy arrival, my daughter. Thanks, Mom. What brings you to see my daughter? I've come to discuss a subject with you. Really? Talk to me. Did you know what your son was going to do in France? Because his trips become very repetitive. And as soon as he goes there, he forgets all about me. It's something that's always upset me since the beginning of our marriage. I see. I have the impression that your son is having extramarital affairs. What are you trying to say about my son? Is it because he travels regularly that he cheats on you? Uh-uh. I've got proof, Mom. There is a certain Didi who communicates with your son every time. I overheard the messages myself. Is that reason enough to accuse my son? My son has never had another woman but you in his life, and you can believe me. And why does he always travel to see that Didi? I know he doesn't chase women, but it's weird. Calm down, girl. Take it easy. One thing's for sure, no one else will take your place. You're the woman of the house. Forget all these suspicions. Okay. Why do I get the feeling that my mother-in-law is complicit with her child? It's like she's hiding something from me. In any case, everything is in God's hands. Happy arrival, son. Thanks, Mom. I hope you arrived safely. How long have you been here? This morning. Does your friend know you're here yet? Not yet. Let me call him and let him know. No, Mama. That's not necessary. I just came to say hello. But why? Is there a problem? No, Mama. I'd like to give him a little surprise. Okay. How much is my bill, sir? The gentleman behind you has already paid your bill. Really? Thank you very much, sir. Very kind of you. Please, madam. My name is Didier. I'm Rebecca. Pleased to meet you. You're welcome. Are you still outside? Yes, my car had a little problem on the way here. So I parked it in the garage. I had to order a cab, which takes a while to arrive. But I think it'll be here by then. Let me give you a lift. Seriously? Of course. Thank you. You said there was something wrong with your car? Yes. Luckily I'd found a gentleman who dropped me off at home. This man is really nice. He even paid for our dinner tonight. Who's the gentleman? What's his name? But take it easy. Why are you acting like he did something bad? He told me his name was Didier. Oh, right. You're jealous. No. Why should I be? All the better. Are you expecting someone? Who can visit me at this hour? I'll see who's there. Mr. Didier. What are you doing here at this time of day? I've come to say hello. All right. But it's very early in the morning. Yes, you're right. But I thought that if I hung around a bit, you'd miss me at home. That's all right. Come inside and meet my husband. Okay. Who was it? It was Mr. Didier. The man who dropped me off at home yesterday. What? He dares to come into my house and hit on my wife. Ah. Uh, what are you talking about? How he came on to me. If not, what's he doing here at this hour? He's in the living room. 
Go and see him. You'd better calm down. Why do you let him in? Please calm down and at least say hello to the person. Don't forget to say thank you for his help yesterday. And above all, be nice. David. What are you doing here? What the hell is going on here? Do you two know each other? Yes, darling. He's my best friend. You've got to be kidding me. You see what I mean, honey? It's a very small world. I'm going to the toilet. Glad to know you are my husband's best friend. The pleasure is shared. But why didn't you tell me straight away that you knew my husband? I wanted to surprise him. I see. You really pulled it off. So your name's David too? Yes, that's my official name. Didier is just a name I like to use sometimes. Okay, I see. Give me a few minutes. I'll be right there. Okay. What do you have, honey? Honey. I've got nothing, I'm coming. But what's wrong? Nothing, dear. I'm fine. But you were throwing up. It's okay. Okay. I'll try to make breakfast for you and David. I'll be in the kitchen. Okay. What the hell are you doing in my house? Are you trying to get me into trouble or something? What are you talking about? You think I'm stupid? How many months have you been ignoring me? You don't even check up on me. You think you'll get away with this? But calm down. Damn it. Please leave. I'll come and see you in the evening if you want to talk. You'd better keep your word. I will come. Where is it? He's gone, darling. But why did you let him go when you know I'm making him dinner? He was in a hurry. Okay. Happy birthday, honey. Thank you. Would you like to come home soon? I've got a surprise for you. It's going to be complicated, darling. And why? I'll be swamped at work tonight. I might be home in the morning. Until the wee hours of the morning? Ah. Uh. Maybe I'll even sleep there. I think we'll all spend the night at your job today. What are you going to do? I'll spend the night with you there. Aren't I your wife? How can you say such a thing? Are you trying to get me into trouble? Stay at home. I'll make an effort to get home soon. What time? I don't know yet. I'm telling you, I'll be home soon. Stop asking me so many questions. Okay. It's already 9 p.m., but my husband still hasn't come home. Even on his birthday. He prefers to stay out because he has to work. I wouldn't like to accept the fact that he's cheating on me, but now I have no choice. What am I doing here alone? Why don't I surprise him at the office? I'll really know whether he's there or not. But they've all closed down here. Or is his car inside the premises? Are you looking for someone, ma'am? I'm security. Yes, sir. I brought my husband something to eat. Who's your husband? It's Mr. Mark. Ah uh, yes. Boss Mark. I'm at attention, ma'am. I didn't know you were my boss's wife. Don't worry. Is he there? May I see him? Madam. Boss is out of the office. He'd been off since 5.30 p.m. He did? He told me he was going to hang out at work today. Boss never hangs around at work, madam. He's always out early. He didn't? He wasn't in the office yesterday either? Yesterday he'd gone downstairs at around 3 p.m. His French friend had come to pick him up. What French friend? His name is Mr. David. He's so nice. He gives me money. You don't know your husband's best friend, or what? Ah yes. I know him very well. Do you have any idea where they went? I think I heard them talking about a birthday party at David's mom's house. Birthday party? Isn't it your husband's birthday today? Or did I hear wrong? No, you didn't. It's Mark's birthday today. Do you know where the party is? Yes, ma'am. 
Happy birthday, Mark. Thank you very much, my best. I loved all your gifts. Thank you so much. It really makes me happy to know that. Your happiness is my happiness. Thank you. You can't imagine how happy we are to see you still together. Yes, my boys. We're very proud of you. We're also delighted to have you with us all the time. Isn't it, Mark? Of course we do. We have the most beautiful mothers in the world. Are you looking for someone, Miss? Yes, I'm invited to the birthday party. Ah, all right. Let me search you before you enter. Okay. That's fine. You can enter, ma'am. All right, then. Shall I ring the bell again? No, go ahead. Thank you for existing. Thanks to you too. Mark. Rebecca. What are you doing here? What is she doing here? Oh, my God. What did I just see? This is serious. What's serious? Shh. Please listen to me, darling. What else do you have to tell me? I've already got it all figured out. It's not what you think, darling. It was just a slip. Don't play dumb with me, Mark. You make one false move to kiss a man? He's my best friend. We just tease each other. You think it's normal? Even if I turn a blind eye to your so-called slip, there's still an eel under the rock. First of all, you lied to me about being at work. But I wasn't. You had organized the party for your birthday without even informing me, your wife. It was David's idea. And then afterwards, you went along with his plan, that's why you lied to me. Even your mom did the same. I was going to tell you afterwards, as soon as I got home, that my friend had thrown me a surprise party. Believe me, darling. I'm so sorry. Stop confusing me. I've got to get some sleep. See you tomorrow. What did I do? I'm off to work, darling. Have a nice day. I'm so sorry about yesterday. I hope you're not still angry with me. We had too much to drink yesterday. We really didn't know what we were doing. Please don't take it the wrong way. It'll never happen again. So I hear. Have a nice day at work. Thank you. I didn't know you were in the kitchen. I've been looking for you. Happy arrival. Thank you. It's only 5.30 p.m. I've already finished my job. You didn't go to see him tonight? You never got home before 8 p.m. Yet you finish at 5.30. And often, you even get off early. It's okay, darling. Please don't mention my friend again. I brought you a good gift to make it up to you. Okay. Thanks. I haven't heard from Mark in days. Even when I go to his service, he doesn't see me anymore. Is he mad at me or something? It's all because of that woman. I don't even know where she came from that day. It won't be so easy. Mark has really changed towards me now. He comes home quickly, and he takes better care of me than before. In any case, I'm trying to believe that he's telling me the truth. And that my ideas really are wrong. I love him anyway. And I don't want to lose him. I know he even. Hello. Yes, hello. Mark is not here. I didn't come to see Mark. I came to talk to you. Let's hear it. I came to warn you to leave Mark in peace. I don't know what you're talking about. Why won't you let Mark come and see me? Who the hell do you think you are? You think he's yours alone? Mark is my lover. If you don't know, I'm going to tell you today. What are you talking about? I don't quite understand. Are you blind or just stupid? With all that your eyes saw last time, didn't you understand anything? Mark has been my love ever since. And he always will be. What? You're very naive. You're just a cover. Mark never liked you. Even his mother doesn't like you. She prefers me. You're here, 
just to make children and serve as a blanket for us while we enjoy the good life. Stop talking nonsense. My husband is not what you're talking about. <laughs> What do you want to see before you believe me? Who do you think Dee Dee was? So you're Dee Dee? Have a nice day. And good housekeeping to you. Hey, my god, is my husband gay? No, it's not possible. I don't want to believe that. What I got myself into. What are all these parcels doing outside? Why are your parcels outside and why are you crying, honey? Are you gay? I'm so sorry, darling. Does that mean it's true? But stop crying and answer me. I've explained everything from the beginning, darling. Please calm down to listen to me, please. Twenty years back. Hi. Hello. It's Mark, isn't it? Of course. You're David, aren't you? Yes, it's me. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you, David. You have beautiful eyes, Mark. Thank you very much. I beg you. So you've come from France to study here with us? Yes. Alright. But why did you choose to come here? I'm sure there's a very good school over there. Yes, you're right. But I feel more at home here. I'm of mixed race and my mother is from the country. So I preferred to come and stay with her and the best international school I could choose was here. I understand better now. You're finally out of the room? Yes. But why did you take so long to get out? I don't have any money to eat today. I just went out to get some water and go back to class. Oh, Mark. Since when do you necessarily need to have money on you before you eat? We eat together every time, don't we? You don't necessarily have to have money. Listen, David. I'm often embarrassed that you buy me food every day and I can never buy it for you. Who told you it was a problem? Uh-uh. Come and sit down to eat. Your food will get too cold. Did you order me a dish? Do you really think I'd eat alone without thinking of you? Thank you so much, David. You were an angel. I'm so sorry. Come eat and stop thanking me. Welcome home, my angel. How was your school day? It was a wonderful mother. Okay, son. I hope you get very good grades. One day you'll be a great doctor or diplomat. You're going to build me a big house and buy me a really nice car. Okay, mom. I'll come and get you something to eat. I've been at the market since morning, so I didn't have a chance to make you lunch. Don't worry, Mom. I had reserved my breakfast to eat at noon. Oh, Mark. But why didn't you eat it at school? Mommy. I don't think it was a good idea to bring my own breakfast to school. My classmates will laugh at me. Don't forget that my school is full of rich kids. I wouldn't want to expose our financial status at school. I'm so sorry, my boy. I wish I could give you enough pocket money like all those rich kids, but I can't right now. I'm aware of that, Mom. You don't have to worry. So you stayed hungry? No, Mom. I have a friend who invites me to eat at the school restaurant every day. What? Who's this friend that keeps inviting you over? I don't know who you're friends with. He's a very nice person, Mom. His name is David. Really? But where does he get the money to invite you every day? I wouldn't want you to get into trouble at school. Don't worry, Mom. His parents can afford it, and I'm not forcing him to do anything. He's the one who insists on buying me food. Anyway, thanks to your friend for his good faith. Now I understand why you never complain. You have to bring your friend home so I can get to know him and thank him. Okay, Mom. He insists on coming to my place. I'm the one who refuses. You refuse because your mother is poor and our house isn't nice. Isn't that so? Seeing the palace he lives in, I'm a little uncomfortable bringing him here. I understand. 
What's wrong, my boy? It's okay, mom. Stop hiding the truth from me. Your dad had called me this morning. He was also worried because you looked weird on your Skype call last night. What's wrong? I'm very sad, mom. And why? What do you need? Mommy. Mommy. My friend Mark was fired yesterday in the middle of a composition. Oh, why? He was sent back to school. Oh, I'm sorry, but why hadn't his parents paid his school fees? He is fatherless. I think his mother can't take care of his school needs. Sad. I hope her situation is resolved soon. I hope so too. I'm so sorry, my boy, for not living up to your upbringing. But stop crying, mom. It only makes me sad. Ever since your father died, things have been so hard for me. I wish we could offer you a better education at this great school, but we'd have to change schools next year, since you're already losing the current year. I don't mind. I don't have a choice. We'll make do with what we've got. This reduces my chances of success, but then, no one can be held responsible for the impossible. Thank you so much for your understanding and love. That's enough, Mom. Don't cry anymore. Let me accompany you to the market today, as I'll be at home. No, it's always better to learn. You never know. Maybe I'll find a way to pay the second installment of your contribution. You have to be ready at all times. Okay, Mom. David. What the hell are you doing here? I'd come to say hello. Well, aren't you happy to see me? Of course it is. But how did you recognize my house? I asked around. Okay. Don't just stand there. Come and sit down. So how is the composition coming along? I hope you're doing well. I'm okay. But I'm not at all happy with your current situation. Don't worry, my friend. Nothing to worry about. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you that my mom and I have decided that I'll be changing schools as of next year. Oh. But why? Where do you want to go? And which school? I'll be in a public school ten times cheaper than our school. Why have you taken such a decision? Can't you see you're jeopardizing your future? What do you want me to do, David? You know my situation. I don't want to give my mom any more trouble. She's already struggling to pay for the house and all the other bills, as well as giving me enough to eat. I wouldn't want her to have to pay my school fees next year. Your situation worries me a lot, Mark. Please don't worry about me. You'd better concentrate on your composition. Don't burden your head with my problems. Your problems are my problems, Mark. Yes, hello. Hello, madam. I'm calling from the principal of your son's school. Ah, right. Please, I couldn't get the money together. I'm really sorry, but my son is in danger of losing this school year. I've got rather good news for you, madam. I already know what you're proposing. You want me to sign a contract and pay for it later. Wouldn't you agree? Let me remind you that I'm not on a permanent contract. Nor a civil servant. Don't you think this will be a great loss for you? I don't know when my mustard sales will allow me to pay you. Even if I pay for this year, what about next year? Please calm down, madam. I'd just like to inform you that your boy's school fees have been paid over three years. <laughs> Please double check all data. I hope you're not a new trainee accountant, are you? Take the time to check things out. There's no mistake, ma'am. This is your son. Please. Check my son's surname very carefully. There's a G before the B, and the first name is C at the end, not K. Listen, lady. This is about your son. I'm the principal of the school in question, and I know you and your late husband well. Really? We have received a bank transfer from Mathias in France. David's father, 
your child's friend. Mr. Matthias also undertakes to cover all expenses related to your son's studies, including living expenses and documentation for the three years. I must be dreaming. What is this miracle? Congratulations, madam. Your son deserves this support. He's a very smart boy. We would also like to inform you that we will be giving him the chance to retake all the homework he missed during his period of absence. Thank you very much. I thank God for this miracle. I didn't expect it at all. Oh mama. Did you win the lottery or what? If I even won the lottery, I wouldn't be so happy, my son. But share your joy with me too, mom. My son, you're going back to school tomorrow morning. What? I hope you didn't go into debt to pay my tuition. Your friend David's dad has just paid your school fees for three years, and is also taking care of all your needs. What? David never ceases to amaze me. I'm sure he's the one behind this situation. May God richly bless this boy and all his family for all they do for me every day. Your friend David and his parents are our saviors. You have to take me to your friends so I can thank them. Okay, Mom. I'm very pleased. Thank you very much for everything. You don't have to thank us, Madam. I want you to know that your son is just like ours, as long as he's with our boy. Our door will be open for him 24 hours a day. He can spend days and even months here. He's our son. Wow, may God bless you. Stop crying, Mark's mom. Here's the full story. So you've had this kind of relationship with David for years? Oh, my God. How can I be so naive? Why did you marry me if you knew deep down you loved someone else? You ruined my life. I didn't want to get married. It was my mother who pushed me to the limit. She wanted me to have at least one child with you. So I was just a front for you? You never liked me before. Your mom isn't honest. She knew very well what you are, but yet she pushed me into this marriage. She motivated and encouraged me in every possible way. You're worse than the devil. I love you, Rebecca. That's the truth. I was in a pretending when I said it. It's thanks to you that I knew I could love women too. If I was slow to ask you to marry me, it's because I didn't want to hurt you. I didn't want this day to come in your life. But I couldn't resist my mother's wishes. I love you with all my heart and I'm ready to sacrifice everything not to lose you. I've learned to live with you even though I have a double life. Since my birthday, I realized that I was spoiling everything. So I decided to cut all ties with David. I prefer this life with you as a couple than anything else in the world, Rebecca. I don't want to lose you. Frankly, I don't know what to say. Will an old monkey ever change the way he sits? I've suffered too much in this relationship. I don't want to suffer anymore. Maybe if I'd been properly attached to the Lord, I'd have noticed this flaw and walked away from you ever since. My ignorance has taken me very far, to the point where I'm married with two children to boot. What will I tell your children tomorrow? What about my Christian faith? Please don't give up on me. I promise this will be behind us forever. I will confess and convert. I renounce this life forever. It's over. No, I don't think. Please, I need to spend a few days with my mother. I need time to think and pray before making a decision. Okay. If that's what you want, I'll let you go. But once again know that I really love you. Ah. Uh, what are you doing here at this hour without even warning? What happened to your head? I'm tired, Mom. I'm tired. What's wrong, girl? My husband is gay, Mom. I don't get it. My husband is his friend's lover. What? It's an abomination. You can't stay in this marriage. They're probably in a cult. 
That's why they do it. You won't go there anymore. That's a real shame for us. What a curse. This is my story, Pastor. I don't know what decision to make. Should I leave my marriage? Should I stay in it like this? I don't know what to do. My mother is already adamant that I should leave. Your story is very sad, Sister Rebecca. It's really sad. But I'd even like you to thank God for revealing this dark side of your husband's life to you. The damage is already done. We can't change the past, but we can act in the present to make the future better. I'd like to tell you that God hates sin, but He loves us sinners. We have no right to judge your husband. You said in your narratives that your husband really loves you, didn't you? Yes, Pastor. You also said that he doesn't want to lose you, and that he says he's really willing to sacrifice everything for your marriage. Isn't he? Yes, Pastor. So the question I'd like to ask you right now is whether you really love your man too. Yes, I love him very much, Pastor. Okay, then you've already got your answer. You're the only ones who can solve this problem between you. No parent or anyone else has the right to make a decision for you. The couple is the two of you. Love always triumphs over all. My little pastor's advice would be to really pray for your husband. I'll also pray with you both. It's God who transforms man. If your husband really has the desire and the will to convert, God will work on his behalf. He will have mercy on him. Don't forget that Jesus Christ came to take us away from our sins, and whoever believes will see the glory of God. Let us pray and listen to God's voice. His will will be made clear through grace. Okay, Pastor, thank you very much. I've taken good note of your advice. But I'd like to stay with my mom until this whole thing is cleared up. I couldn't agree more. Tomorrow I'll try to have a chat with your husband. Thank you very much, Pastor. And so ends the sad story of Mark and Rebecca. A double life that was later revealed after six years of marriage. How would you react if you were confronted with such a story? What resolutions would you make? Let us know in the comments. It doesn't just happen to other people. Your opinions and experiences could save many a life. May the Lord protect us and help us to always stand firm in the faith, and to have discernment in all areas of our lives. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video to support us. Until next time. Bye.